Hello everyone and welcome to the 805 Focus. I'm Christine Davis. You know, we're really fortunate here in Santa Barbara to have some great non-profit organizations. Hospice of Santa Barbara is one of them. They've been helping families and individuals throughout Santa Barbara County for the past 40 years. With me today to discuss the organization, I have three very special guests, Mary Ransom, from Hospice Santa Barbara, one of the councillors there. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you. David Selberg is the new Executive Director of Hospice of Santa Barbara. Welcome, David. Thank you. And Evie Vesper, the HSB Board President. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Now, Mary, I wanted to start with you. I think people, most people seem to know what hospice is. They know that it has something to do with end-of-life care. But what you guys do is really a lot more than that, isn't it? Yes, it is different than that. Our mission is to care for anyone experiencing the impact of a life-threatening illness or grieving the loss of a loved one. So most, most of the time what I do is the grief part of it. I've been a grief therapist uh, with Hospice of Santa Barbara for about nine years. And, and I run groups. Um, and there's another program, another department that cares um, for those with experiencing the life-threatening illness. Right. And when you say um, dealing with grief, what sorts of people are we talking about? Oh, anyone who has, um, so it, it, uh, people get it mixed up with um, sometimes the other agency in town and people think, oh, my loved one had to have died from cancer or in the hospital. But we, ha we deal with anyone who has experienced the, the loss of a loved one. So um, survivors of suicide, those who have found their loved ones um, who have taken their own lives or uh, their loved one who has died in Ohio and they're grieving the loss of a mother or an aunt or an uncle or a best friend. Um, so we do it all. And when you say you've run groups, what sort of groups do you run? I run the Survivors of Suicide group. Um, so I have um, people whose family members took their own life. And you would think these groups would be really depressing and they're not at all. We actually laugh a lot. Wow. Yeah, it, it's surprising. It's not depressing. And grief is different than depression, which maybe I can talk about later. Uh, other groups, uh, I run the Widow Widowers support group. There's another group that is healing the loss of an adult child. Uh, at one point we had um, um, uh, a, a, an infant, uh, if, your, if your infant died or um, preterm died, and so it's a group for that too. So you said that there's a lot of laughing that goes on, but I'm sure with some of the groups and some of the individuals, there's also a lot of pain and, and grief that you're dealing with. Yes, absolutely. And I can only imagine how hard your job must mm. be. and. Mm. I'm sure people are wondering, how do you do it? <laughs> uh, I go home and I watch dumb TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do experience secondary grief, and when I get a lot of new clients, it's a lot more difficult, but mostly it's so rewarding. I, I really see the people go from so much pain to having it lighten, and we, uh, we're not bound by uh, having five sessions and then the people are out. We can keep them for a year or even two years. I say that I walk this journey with you for as long as you need. And so some people stay for a month, some people stay for a year, some people uh, are those who have lost a child. They may stay for three years and that's okay because it takes a long time to get over the loss of a child or anyone. Mm. Well, that's wonderful that you have that sort of open-ended mm -hmm. service there. It's wonderful. And, and I might mention that all of our services are free, which is amazing too. 
that is amazing that the services are free. Evie, tell me a little bit about that. How can you provide all of these services for free? Well, what's amazing about Hospice of Santa Barbara is that its hospice approach is with counselors, spiritual care people, and volunteers. So the, the entire service is provided by donations, endowments, et cetera, and grants. And we have a, lot of, a huge fundraising development program. But more importantly, the clients that come in get Mary's services, as, as she has uh, greatly dis, you know, described. But if you are a person coming in with a family member or yourself and you have a life-threatening illness, you're dealing with it, you can come in and be evaluated and your entire family can get care for as long as they need to because it's based on what the family needs, as Mary said. From start to finish, you're evaluated until you really are coping with the loss that you're experiencing. And fortunately, because of our programs and the donations, et cetera, we are not tied to federal guidelines and Medicare reimbursement, that kind of uh, mandated service that so many other medical hospices have. So we are very fortunate in that regard because we are able to provide whole counseling, spiritual care, and volunteers for our, our families. And we link very closely with the medical hospices in town and we augment what they offer. And oftentimes when a client is experiencing um, a death, they're just getting to a point where they are really finally t adjusting and their services need to end based on federal guidelines. It's not a bad thing, it's just we're very different and we can augment. I hope that explains a little bit about what we do. Oh, it does. Oh, good. And I think it sounds amazing that you're really able to specialize the treatment for each individual. Well, and what, what's wonderful is that along with the counseling component that Mary and her team do, we have a patient care services program, which if you are coping with a life-threatening illness, you don't have to be, quote, dying right now. I mean, oftentimes that's what hospice sounds like, but we help patients and families cope over the long haul by having a case manager who is a counselor, who can help you with on how you cope in your home, in your community, and stay in your community, and link with all the medical components in the community, but also having a spiritual care component. We have a great spiritual care counselors that will help you in any way that you need, and volunteers that come in to provide reading, shopping, just sitting, anything that you need, you can have through Hospice of Santa Barbara at no charge for as long as you need it. It is an amazing service. There's nothing like it anywhere. I was going to ask, nothing. are there many other yeah. services like this? It's very unusual. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's the most unique hospice that uh, one can find because it is based on what the family and individuals need at the time of loss, be it end of life or preparing for a loss. Wow. So it's really great. It does sound <laughs> incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, what sort of life experiences did you have that led you to become a board member and now the board president of HSB? Well, I'm fortunate in that um, I had a, a long healthcare career down in the LA area and I moved to Santa Barbara three years ago and had known about Hospice of Santa Barbara because in my healthcare experience I worked in hospice, uh, medical hospice. So I knew of Hospice of Santa Barbara because uh, for all the things I just said, it doesn't cost money and it's all family and individually based. So when I got here, I begged to get involved, and I happened to meet a friend who was on the board who got me involved with Hospice of Santa Barbara, and I have just been impassioned with it since I met them two years ago. So I've been involved in that way because I feel like I have an expertise to offer and develop programs and to try to utilize what I know around medical hospice and how we can integrate and serve our clients in Santa Barbara and the community better. So that's why I'm involved, and I'm really excited to be working with David. We're going to change the world. <laughs> really, Indeed. you'll, you'll I, see. I <laughs> like hearing that. I David, mean. tell us what, what, th what this is about. Well, I'm the new CEO at Hospice, um, and I've worked, I'm born and raised in Santa Barbara, and I've been working in the nonprofit community for almost 25 years, and I've known of Hospice for most of those 25 years. During the 1990s, uh, I worked at Pacific Pride Foundation, which is the HIV AIDS organization in Santa Barbara County. 
and we had pretty high mortality rates. There was very little treatment for people with AIDS in those years. And so Pacific Pride worked very closely and in partnership with Hospice of Santa Barbara. And a lot of um, our clients were isolated, um, had very little support um, from family. And so the Hospice, Hospice of Santa Barbara was there with counseling, uh, social support, and we, I worked really closely with them during those early years of the epidemic. And how have you seen Hospice of Santa Barbara grow since those early days? It's grown tremendously. Uh, I remember during the early years, it was in a small house over by the hospital with a, with a small staff. And you know now um, they have a full range of services, counseling, psychosocial support, um, patient care, and they've really expanded and grown. <clears throat> and I think also that it's such a model that can be brought, it, you know, it's such a presence here on the Central Coast, and as Evie was saying, she knew of it in Los Angeles. Uh, I think it's a model that can be shared throughout the country. It is the second oldest hospice uh, in the United States, and it's an amazing organization. Now you mentioned psychosocial support. What exactly is that? Yeah, well, in addition to the counseling component uh, that Mary's been sharing, there are also social workers on staff and uh, that whole component that helps the family or the individual who's struggling with uh, life-threatening illness access so many resources in the community. We have so many nonprofits and so much support out there in in Santa Barbara County and the whole team at hospice is able to help link the family with those resources in addition to the counseling piece. Now are some of the families of the people that you worked with at Pacific Pride, are mm -hmm. they still involved with hospice? Yeah, I, there, there is a crossover of community support. Um, a lot of our supporters and and those that have, have helped us throughout the years at, at at, uh, where I used to work at Pacific Pride, definitely are part of the support system um, and the community around hospice, absolutely. And tell me a little bit more about the sort of support you had when you were with Pacific Pride. What sort of help did your patients get from Hospice of Santa Barbara? Yes, um, I can remember clearly so many of our clients were they would have one of the counselors at Hospice of Santa Barbara uh, worked with one of our uh, young men who was dying um, from AIDS. And he wanted to document his life. Um, he had, gone, he had, had grown up in, in Central America. He had come here, gotten his PhD um, at an Ivy League school back east, and he was fairly rapidly dying of AIDS. And I remember the, the social worker, counselor at hospice, coming and helping him do this huge collage um, and would meet with him on weekends. And he was able to sort of trace his entire life. And he was in his mid-30s when he, when he passed. And that was a huge thing for him. And it brought some peace to him. It brought a community of friends and even family that that had not been in touch with him for many years, they started to um, come back into his life. And Hospice of Santa Barbara was key in all that happening. And that's just one situation um, of so many, countless. That's a wonderful story. Yeah. Mary, tell me, what are some of the clinical services that are offered at HSB? Well, the individual counseling and the groups that I've mentioned, and I'll mention a few other groups. Uh, we have a poetry group, and uh, once in a while we'll have an art therapy group. Hold it right there. What does the, the poetry group involve? Um, Perry Longo runs it, and she's our former poet laureate of Santa Barbara, and she has, uh, oh, it's a, quite a large group, and I work in the office right next to where the group room is. And again, I hear a lot of laughter. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I don't hear the crying, and that goes on too. But Perry might um, start, uh, read a poem, and start with 
um, if my loved one were here, I wish my loved one would know, something like that. And then they would spend time writing a poem. And what I think is really important about the poetry group, the art therapy group, the other groups, is it's a different way to express your sorrow. So some people are more verbal, and some people want to write. Some people, a, a, a while ago when we were in the little house, uh, we had a music therapist that helped uh, with the grief process. So as many different ways as you can express your grief is the healthier way to do it. What are some of the commonalities that you see between people that are suffering grief and come to you for counseling? Mm -hmm. The motto of Hospice of Santa Barbara is to help heal the loneliness of grief. So I say to people, I can't fix your grief, but I can walk with you on this grief journey. Because most people out there, unless they've experienced uh, the loss, don't understand how long it takes to get through it, how, how deep and complex the feelings are. So loneliness is a commonality. So when we send people to groups, it's be, then they see that they're not alone in their grief. Um, another commonality, uh, there's many, um, overwhelm, um, a lot of fear and anxiety, um, just devastation. And these emotions don't come up neatly one at a time. I like to say uh, sometimes that they come up like a beehive in front of your face and it's all going around in front of your face and no one else can see that. But the grief is with these people all day long, every moment, and um, they have to deal with that in front of their face. And so we just help them, really uh, we validate what they're going through and another thing, some people say, I just feel like I'm going crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and that also is what a lot of it, people experience. And so we, we validate that this is normal for grief. I guess, I guess there's no normal for, for grief. Well, there obviously is normal, but there must be such a range of ways people experience and express grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you found that with the work that you've done, folks? Absolutely. I, I think uh, I was talking to uh, one of the counselors yesterday who said that a woman who had come in two years ago and had um, a cancer diagnosis but then survived, she obtained our services for a year, recovered and has done fine. Now it's two years post and um, she can't have children, so she is really devastated. She's able to come back to the counselor at hospice and get service and care around that loss issue. It all ties in, loss after loss ties into loss, we know that. So that service is still available to her, and I think that's part of the remarkable work that Hospice of Santa Barbara does. Your loss can come back at you and we're there for you. And it's really as if when you're diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, someone holds your hand and will hold your hand through the whole process. You may see Mary and her counselors, or you may see the spiritual care person, you may have a volunteer, but someone will hold your hand through the whole process. And that's what's so unique. We don't stop. It's based on what the client needs, so it's very special. It really is very special. that continuation of care and yes. I don't know if that happens with other hospice services where if your disease has gone away that right. you're still welcome well back. And exactly and we have um, extensive bereavement services and bereavement is very individual it, it, there is no time limit it, it just is what happens to the individual so we provide bereavement services for forever actually and you, as I said in my other example and because of the funding sources for other hospices sometimes they have to stop service and it, it always bothers anyone who works in the hospice arena that you have to not see that person anymore you only have five sessions or bereavements only for a year so Hospice of Santa Barbara is there for everyone in the community and it's 
What's really special is that we interact with all the other hospices and medical services in the Santa Barbara area. And everyone in Santa Barbara experiences loss. Everyone. So I think our work is to make sure that everyone knows we're there and that if you're experiencing loss of any kind, you need to come to Hospice of Santa Barbara. Now, David, what are some of your goals as the new executive director? Well, I think <clears throat> um, one of them is to continue to nurture um, what hospice has built. Hospice has strong relationships with schools, with the school district, so that if a child has um, passed or if a parent of a child has passed, hospice has a presence in that school with that, with that child. Um, hospice also has been working with law enforcement, with our local police department, mm -hmm. um, with, around some grief um, and, and death and dying issues. So I think um, what, what, I, what I see myself doing is continuing to nurture those amazing relationships that hospice has had for so many years. And, um, and as I'm new in my position, I, um, I'm enjoying sitting and listening to those that have received services from hospice, those who have been supporters of hospice for all 40 years that it's been around. Um, that's very heartening. So a lot of what I've been doing is having conversations with this huge community of support around hospice. And I know hospice <coughs> is very much volunteer-based. Who are the volunteers? Who volunteers for hospice? You know, anyone can volunteer. Uh, I had the honor um, a few years ago of going into one of the newer programs at hospice that's, that's very ongoing and thriving right now, where um, it would be assigning a trained volunteer or a mentor, if you will, with a child who's lost a parent. And um, I had the honor of being able to go to the trainings and I had a similar situation having lost my parent at a very young age and being able to share what that journey was. And uh, that has been a, a remarkable thing. And I remember seeing so many uh, volunteers, both young and older, that signed up for this training and were assigned to, to kids, to children, um, as they were going through that, that you know, very difficult process. So volunteers are from every corner of our community. We have um, mm -hmm. a, a new volunteer director who's quite energetic and very exciting to work with. And anyone can volunteer, as David says. And then our volunteer director will call you and talk to you and meet with you and find out what you're interested in because we have patient care services volunteers and you work directly with clients. And some people may not want to do that. And then you can uh, volunteer at our events. You can volunteer doing artwork. We have a... a Build-A-Bear program, it's not Build-A-Bear, but it's a bear program where the volunteers come in and someone, a, mo a lot of children, uh, if a father or mother has died, they bring in their clothing and they will make a bear out of that piece of clothing that is so special to um, a loved one and the bears are just beautiful. So we have all kinds of outreach opportunities for any volunteer to do anything. So. We have a great training program to explain all the opportunities that hospice as well. So I'm urging your watchers to volunteer for hospice. It's yes. It's very fun. Yes, you heard her. <laughs> and it's wonderful that you provide so much training. Yes. That's something that is mm -hmm. wonderful. And are some of the clinicians involved in that? Yes, we can be. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's fun. Watching the programs develop uh, new programs, it's just fun, and we have so much latitude, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have David on board and, and as he says, n nurturing all these programs. Are there any other programs you'd like to tell me about? The Parenting After Loss um, is a program under the Children and Family Services, and I think twice a year we have a group of parents who bring their children and there's a parent loss. And we give them a meal and then they break off into groups. But I what I wanted to say about that, I'm not involved in that because I'm doing the survivors of suicide group at that same time. But we're in with the suicide survivors group and we hear these kids running back and forth and screaming 
and um, I've warned our group about it before and I explain what the group is all about but when you hear these kids being so free with their laughter even in the midst of their difficult pain uh, it, it's really fun and, and it helps our group too. Now for anybody out there who'd like to donate or volunteer how can they contact you? It's easy. Just call Hospice of Santa Barbara, and the number is 805-563-8820, and just share what, you, what you'd like to contribute or what you might need support with. Or you can go to our website at www.hospiceofsantabarbara.org, and there's easy links there for you to um, get connected with. Wonderful. Well, thank you, all of you, for joining us today. It's been great having you here, and all the best with the future of the organization. Thank, thank you. And for you folks at home, if you'd like to contact us here at TVSB, our website is tvsb.tv. Hope you can join us next time on the 805 Focus. I'm Christine Davis. Bye-bye. <laughs>